After adding groups and UVs in the last tutorial, we can now start with adding textures and shaders to our rasterizer. My name is Helga Maus from Pixel Train. We want to have a little bit of a light source around this because if we now go to the render view here and press render for look development, you will see that we only have a headlight and this doesn't fit here exactly as a render environment if we want to have metals and so on. They are highly reflective and so we need something which can be reflected. For this, I go back here to the scene level and maybe we can also name here this geometry and color it really fast so that I know that I want to render this later. And then we can add here from our shelf under light and cameras here an environment light. An environment light is like a light dome which is around here the whole scene and normally it's white but in our case we want to add an environment map here so we tick this little button here and we come into a file chooser. I have some textures placed here in my project and if we now go to the HDRI folder here we see some HDRIs. To see them better you can make a right mouse button click here in this dialog and here you have a show images option and so you can see a little bit better what's going on here without using the preview here. Let us take here the industrial estate. We accept this. In the viewport you see now this industrial estate. You also can switch on here the better lighting conditions. You have this here. And if you want, you can change here in the environment light, for example, if you want to see it in the viewport, yes or no. And if you want to see it also in the rendering. So if you want to render this environment with the image, you have to take here render light geometry. In our case, we don't need this for the moment. And if we now go to the render view and re-render the whole scene, you will see now we have a decent light, which we can use now for look development a little bit better. Okay. We need two materials, one material for this metal plates and one material for the spheres. And for this we have added groups. So now it's no problem to go into our rasterizer here and to add our material node after the rasterizer output. So we add a material node. We add it here. And the material node needs a material on the other side. And the materials were normally added in the shop context which you find here but since Houdini 16 we have a new context now which is named slash matte context here which is more flexible you will see this in later tutorials and so I add here now my material you can add notes here in this wax builder by pressing the tab key and you see a whole bunch of notes which you can use for building procedural materials Starters or newbies tend to use the material palette here a lot. So I will switch first over to this palette and you see on the left side we have a gallery of all kind of shaders and presets which are really nice installed with Houdini. And on the right side you see here the two contexts in which material or shaders can live. Like I've said, you have a shop context here. You can open this. And you also have the new slash matte context. And if you now take a material and drag it over, for example, I want to take a principal shader, you have to make sure that you add it to the correct context. If you have added your own material network somewhere, you also will find these here in the list. And it's really nice. You can open them up here and drag shaders into it. And I want to use a principal shader. This is a really nice PBR shader. And you see this Disney castle here, which is really nice. So it's a reminder for you that this is a PBR shader. We added one. And if you now want to work with this, you go into the slash matte context. I press the H key to home the view. And here is the principal shader you've added. We rename him with PS underscore plates, for example. So this is the shader I want to use in the plates. And if you now select this shader here, and you take a look here into the attributes, you see a whole bunch of attributes which are really easy to understand because it's a PBR system. You have a base color here, a basic color, 
you have the specular amount, you have reflection, and here is the interesting part. You have a metallic slider where you can change between a dielectric or a conductor material really easily. Like I've said, it's a PDR approach at this point. Also, you can add textures here under the texture slot. You see here you can add textures by ticking use textures. We will do this in a moment. And the interesting part behind this here is, and you will see it in a moment in another tutorial I will do with this project, this here only is a wrapper. So if you make a double click here onto the material, after you have opened it up, you see here allow editing of contents, you will see that this here is a whole material network and you can add your stuff to it and this here is only an interface like we've built the interface for our subnets to make it more easy to work with but if you want you can dive in. The nice thing behind this new approach of this slash mat context is that the most important stuff you have now here as input slots and you can directly use them here in the network graph. We want to test this principal shader for the plates. So I go here and select, for example, a bluish color for the moment. Okay. This shader is blue. And now I add another principal shader, this time through the tab menu here. And we name this PS underscore spheres. And we can make them reddish. Okay. To add them now to our objects, normally we can use here a drag and drop in this render view, but we want to hook it up into the materials node. And so for this, I go here into my rasterizer to my materials node here. And we now can address here these shaders through this little icon here. I go into the slash mat context here and say, I want first to have, for example, the plates. I say accept. And in the moment I do that and I render again, or you can also look into your viewport, you will see that now the whole object gets this bluish information because, yeah, we don't have defined which group we want to use. And if you don't add a group here, you get it for the whole primitives collection. We have made groups, so we can open this up, and here you see the plates mat group. And if you do that, you instantly see that uh, mantra re renders, and you see exactly the association I want. If you want to add more materials, you can press this plus sign here, or add here a plus, and you get a new tab with a second material. This time, I want to use this for the spheres, and the material for the spheres is this here. Okay. And now you see the association of the materials works. Now we want to change the materials a little bit more to metal. Let us move here to the slash mat context. And I select the plates. And if I want now to add textures, you have to make sure that you remove the base color. So I go back here and make it white, 111. You will see this in a moment. I go here to the textures. Say I want to have a texture for the base color and then you get this new area here where you can now load a texture. So let us find something from CG Textures. I have here some metal stuff and maybe we can use this metal bear here. And in the moment you now add this, you see instantly you get here your metal. That's the reason why we've added our UVs so that you really can see now these metal bars here. If you want to change, for example, the color space or so, you can change it here and how it wraps. And now if you go back here to the surface, like I've said, if you now change here the color, for example, I go here into the colors and make it bluish, you will see that you tint with this base color the texture with this color can be useful, but in my case, I really want to leave it at white so that I really get the texture here of this metal bars. This is not metal in the moment. It's still a dielectric. So for this, I have to go a little bit deeper here in my principal shader. You see here, there's the metallic amount. I bring it to one and now it's really a metal. You see it here in the reflections and so on. And now you can start changing here your attributes. 
for example the roughness and so on but yeah that's not the topic of this tutorial maybe we want to have some bumps so if you go a little bit closer go back to the render view we still have this camera here so we see exactly what's going on and we can go here to bump and normals we can enable this and the texture type of my bump map is in the moment I don't have a normal map a bump map so black and white luminance I go to the texture path and if you want to have the same texture you can try it here in this drop down menu these are the textures which are used but I don't see this because of the capturing so I go in here and select this here again and so now the same texture is now used here for the bumps you see they are really really strong you can change here now the effect scale a little bit and yeah now we have our metal bars let us go to the spheres also here I remove now the color for the base color we want to have them metallic go to the textures base color and this time I load this bronze copper and we add them and that's it you see now we've added our materials to our rasterizer and in the next tutorial we can talk about making this image now render ready see you next time